And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Folks, sometimes a game's pedigree gets me excited about it, and that's the case here with Hengist. This is in the two-player line that Lookout and Mayfair is doing. The first game in that line, Patchwork, I like very, very much. And this game is also designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Agricola, Caverna, La Havre, Orlan Labora, I mean, Bonanza. Very excited to try this one out. Good artwork, nice-looking components. It even comes with a ship. Huzzah! Let's take a look at this two-player game. You're going to put three boards together. These boards are randomly placed. There's, there's two sides to each, and so these boards can be placed together. And then on top of each board, you're going to put one of these strips. There are several of these strips that you'll use over the course of the game. You're going to actually set aside three more of the group that you have to use. You're going to randomly put counters here. These counters go from four to ten. So you'll put four down, and then you'll place them in order. So here's eight, six, six, five, nine, seven, seven, six, nine, eight, seven, four. And then each player is going to have three of their guys in this boat. This boat here is the coolest part of the whole game. You put it together, it fits in a box, nice. Now, on your turn, you can take an action with each of your raiding parties. Each of these guys is a raiding party. So an action can be, get out of the boat. That's one action. An action can also be, move from the boat, this is the beach by the way, to another spot on the beach, get back on the boat, or move to the hinderlands here. Now, when you move to one of these places, you have to pay a card that matches it. So let's say I want to move here. I would have to pay this card. So in this case, I would have to pay this card here and discard this card from hand to move down here. Finally, the last action that you can take is with each raiding party is to raid something. You don't actually move, you just raid. So let's say I wanted to raid down in that area. I would have to use a card. Now this is a double card. It counts as two different things. And I'd have to use that one and one of the mounting cards. So when I do that, I follow the path, then I look at the tile, that is the blue path, and you'll see that the blue path comes over here, and I get this. I don't reveal this to my opponent, in fact, I'll put a shield of my color on it to show I can look at this whenever I want. Once my opponent has done the same thing, we then flip it face up like this, and so both players can see. So you can see that the white path actually goes here, the green path goes here, the blue path goes here, and the red path goes here. Most of the time... The white path goes to the first or second one, although it does occasionally go to third and even to the fourth. And the same thing, like the red one usually goes to the last two, but sometimes it even goes to the first. So you're never quite sure. Let me just show you some of the other ways that these are put together here. So once players will do that, they're going to go down and they'll get this. There's no reason for anyone to go down that party again. Now, as players are playing the game, they are occasionally going to play these cards. This can be used for several things. Once, it, it can be used as a wild card. It can do basically whatever you want it to do. You can also use it as a spy card to look at one of these tiles. And so you can know what's on the other side of that tile. And you can bring back someone who's died. Well, how does someone die? Basically, whenever you play one of these cards, the boat moves. And the boat moves, and the boat moves. When the boat gets to the end of the track and moves, then this one is flipped over, all the way over here. And remember those three tiles we put aside at the beginning? We put one of those here, and we add some more tokens to the end. Anybody who was on the board when it got moved is lost, and the only way to get them back is by playing one of these cards. The boat will keep doing this. There will be three more boards. When the boat moves off the third board, when the boat moves 12 times, the game is over, and whoever has the most of these tokens is the winner of the game. Uh, hum, hum, hum. Uh, oh, this game's really bad. I mean, numbingly bad. I was really surprised. Uh, when I was done playing it, I went online to see what other people thought and found that I was not the only one. The rules, for one thing, aren't quite clear in how they work exactly. They leave little things out. That's not the big deal. The big deal is the fact that the game is absolutely just simply playing the cards you've been got. You get cards, I will move here, I will get this, I will move here. 
But if you don't get the cards you need and the other person does, they will do better than you. In fact, the game has these weird hang-ups that can happen where all your stuff can get stuck somewhere. Or no one draws one of those cards to move the boat for the longest time, and so you're just sitting there drawing cards. Do you know that at the end of your turn, you draw two cards plus one card for each person that you have in one of these middle positions? Which means the first person to get people in those middle positions is going to draw a lot more cards than your opponent. This game has a horribly bad rich get richer thing. Ooh, I'm getting way more cards than you. You're getting fewer cards than me. Oh, you've lost one of your guys. So now you're going to get even fewer cards because you can't get that guy in the hinterlands. And the way to get that guy back is to get one of those wild cards. Oh, you didn't get any. How bad for you. And it's just the same thing over and over and over again. Then you go down those paths and yeah, there's a chance that the path might go to the high one, but it might go to the low one. But it doesn't really matter which path you pick because you're going to go down the path of the cards you actually have drawn. This game is literally move stuff. I mean, on the very first turn, if you want to, you can put all three of you guys on the beach. Do you know what this, the other player does on their first turn? Absolutely nothing unless they happen to get a wild card on their first turn. They, they can't do anything. They just have to sit there. Now, I've seen people ask this online. They're like, well, that's a bad strategy. If I make my opponent sit somewhere and I'm an extra and I can just start moving down the beach and do things, I'm ahead of them. I can put three people there I can move one guy on the beach and hopefully the other one or two into the hinterlands, draw more cards, and I'm ahead of them. Oh, wow. I, I can't say enough bad things about this. It, the artwork is fine. The theme is not there, but that doesn't care. It's a two-player game. The boat is really cool, and it looks neat. I love this concept of going, and you're not sure which way the path will go. But since that's the whole game, and since it's not sitting there going, ooh, I wonder if I'll get an eight or a seven. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, please avoid this one at all costs. I, I really had expected more from it. I, I don't mind the abstractness of the theme. I, I like a back and forth tension filled two player game. There is no tension in this game. There's frustration because you can't draw the cards you want. Bad. Dice Tower Judgment, a really bad game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.